G'day guys, Matt Brand here and welcome to the 2022 BMW 7 Series. The 7 Series is a bit like your high school crush. You know, that beautiful girl with the, the nose job and the voluptuous booty and no mere mortal could ever dream of being with. Well, replace the beautiful girl with the BMW 7 Series. The nose job is the enormous kidney grills that grew by 40% from the pre-phase lift. And the nice big bum stays the same really, except that you do get an LED light bar. And the fact remains that no peasant like me could ever dream of affording a luxury limo like this, at least not new. This 7 Series is actually a pretty special one. You might notice that it's extra quiet in here, and that's because this is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, an EV. Meaning not only does it have a petrol engine, but it's also got a battery pack and an electric motor. And better yet, because of tax breaks in Australia anyway, this works out to be the cheapest 7 Series you can buy despite being one of the most powerful. Cheap being relative, of course, this thing still costs 230,000 Australian dollars drive away. Now the 7 Series really has two major competitors, the Audi A8 and the Mercedes S-Class. Today we're gonna to be doing an in-depth review of the 7 Series. We're gonna talk about how it drives, how it looks, what the interior is like, because it is insane. And of course, whether or not you should buy a 7 Series, which for most is, is probably a pipe dream. And if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you could go down there, hit the subscribe subscribe button and that notification bell so you can join the Matt Brand Cars community and see every time I release one of these reviews. It's a, it's a weekly thing, it's pretty good. Actually, before we begin this review, I wanna tell you a little story because this is not the first time I have sat in a 7 Series. Back almost a couple decades ago when I was but a wee little lad, Daddy Brand actually used to own a 7 Series. It was red and it was an E38 or third generation, so from the late 90s. And Daddy Brand used to tow our little fiberglass fishing boat with it and that was later stolen, but that's another story. Until one day when Daddy Brand was putting the little fiberglass boat into the water, he either forgot to put on the handbrake or it failed. That part of the story is unclear. And next thing you know, there is a 7 Series floating away in the water. Uh, yeah, it was totaled, of course. Oh my God, there's alpacas over there. Interesting. So let's give it a bit of source to, oh my God, honor the memory of the 7 Series. This thing shouldn't be that fast. <laughs> this thing should not be that fast. So the 7 Series lineup technically starts with the 730D, which you can get for just under 230,000 Australian dollars drive away. And it's an inline six cylinder diesel. It's a pretty punchy little engine, zero to 100 in about 6.1 seconds. It's decent. But like I said, because of tax breaks, this actually works out to be the cheapest 7 Series that you can buy in Australia. The 745E, which you can get for just under 224,000 Australian rubles drive away. And with that, you get a petrol inline six cylinder turbo engine, and of course an electric motor and battery pack. And on paper, the engine really isn't that impressive. The engine is detuned to the regular 740i, so it only pumps out 210 kilowatt of power and 420 newton meters of torque. It's about the same as the i30N that I reviewed, and that comes with a, a four cylinder turbo. So what's going on here? Well, of course, you add in the electric motor, which adds another 83 kilowatt of power and 265 newton meters of instant torque, and all of a sudden you're at 290 kilowatt of power and 600 newton meters of torque. So yeah, pretty damn powerful. And frankly, that's a lot of numbers. So what better way to show you how quick this thing is than to launch it. So before we launch it, let's put the car into sport mode. It stiffens up the suspension, the bolstering on the seats tighten up. We'll put our traction into sport mode. Mm. And now because we still have some battery, the car will give us ultimate maximum power, 290 kilowatt. 600 new meters of torque. So uh, yeah, let's launch it. The zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles per hour is... Oh! It's claimed at 5.1 seconds, but I bet you it's faster. I've actually ordered myself a little draggy, so now I'll be able to time my launches instead of just relying on manufacturer's numbers. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for that, but let me tell you, on its own, this thing is incredibly fast. And really, the electric motor isn't just to save the environment, it's also to give you quite a lot of power. And of course, instant torque. Let's give it a bit more saw, shall we? Oh, slap me silly with a dead fish. This thing is quick, <laughs> this thing is fast. Now, although you can get the 7 Series as an all-wheel drive, they call it X-Drive, this is rear-wheel drive. So power is sent through a beautiful eight-speed torque converter transmission, which is just 
insanely good. Upshifts are totally seamless, as are downshifts, as you would expect. I mean, this thing, it, it, it really is a limo in every respect. But yeah, that power is sent through to the rear wheels with the electric motor as well to the rear. So you get quite a lot of power going to those rear wheels, but it doesn't matter because if we plan our foot, takes a while to kick down. <laughs> Oh my God, this thing is so fast. Yeah, the transmission when you're in the hybrid mode, it doesn't respond very well, but you don't really need it to because you don't ever want to floor this thing because it's just so comfortable, but we'll talk about that later. Now, even though battery size increased for this facelift, you now get like a 10.7 kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty decently sized. The claimed range or WLTP range is about 52 kilometers. Yeah, I'm getting closer to 36 kilometers, which really isn't great range. The good news is that even once you deplete the battery completely, it still acts like a hybrid like you'd find in a Toyota or a Lexus product. And so it remains really fuel efficient. Right now, my average fuel efficiency is 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Very impressive for a car that weighs 2.1 tons and has as much power as it does. And don't worry, you don't lose the electric motor when the battery dies because it does give you little short bursts when needed. As I said, acting like a hybrid. But yeah, there is a lot more I want to tell you about the 7 Series and how it drives. But for now, let's talk about how it looks. Okay, so let's move on to the exterior now of the 7 Series because I think it is absolutely stunning. Yes, you have absolutely enormous grills. These things grew by 40% when they did the facelift for this thing, but I don't really care because, wow. <laughs> It's just, it's so cool. Actually, the reason they did that is because the Chinese market, which is one of the biggest markets for the 7 Series, absolutely loves their giant grills. You have heaps of actually functional aero up the front and have a look at the headlights here. These are LED laser headlights, the BMW laser headlights, which means that they can blank out part of their beam for oncoming traffic. So they're the best that you can get from BMW, as you would expect. When we come around to the side, the thing that strikes me most is just how enormous this thing is. Now, this thing has the M Sport package on it as well, which means that you get these 20 inch wheels, which look tiny compared to the size of the 7 Series. Look, you got a little M badge here. And as you would expect, you have chrome galore across the entire side of this thing. I can't even get it into frame. It's that massive. Actually, one of the coolest things about the 7 Series is that because it is a luxury limo, it does have soft close on the doors, meaning you don't have to put in any effort to close the doors. It's pretty funny. So yeah, the side profile is really nice. But if we come around to the rear, like any good 2022 car, not only do you get an LED light bar, you also get a chrome strip. So you get both of those new trends, but it does look really, really cool. And when the whole lighting system is on at the back, it's a stunning, stunning look, super elegant. Also, no, the exhausts are not this big. They're actually much smaller than that. But uh, of course they use giant fake shrouds to cover them up. And actually while we're at the back, we might as well talk about the boot. Of course it is electronically opening. You can press a button to close it as well, but you don't actually get a huge amount of room in here. It's actually about 20% less than the standard 7 Series because of the electric battery and the electric motor. Though you can do this nifty trick down here where you can make it a lower floor, but it doesn't mean you get a flat loading bay. So I just keep it up like that. You can still get plenty of stuff within here. It's just not quite as good as you would kind of hope for such a giant car. But yeah, if you think the exterior is nice, wait till you see the interior. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, let's move on to the interior now. And I want to start with what makes this car so special. And also, so expensive. First of all, the quality of the materials in here is unparalleled. You have leather on the dash, on the door sills, on the armrest, on the center armrest. It all feels so premium within here, as it should for 229,000 Australian dollars. You have this fine wood here that extends down to here and all around here. Now, it looks like it has aluminium, but it's not real aluminium, but it would fool you. You know, quality exudes everywhere. Listen to this. The buttons on the steering wheel are nicer than you'll find in most other BMWs. They have literally done everything to make things feel quality. Even the key, the key, they have added weight to it and made it feel metallic. It feels nicer than the standard BMW key. Nuts. Another area where they have luxury-fied this car is in the air conditioning controls. Usually in BMWs, you get a little digital panel. This is a digital panel, but it's an LCD panel. So it has color to it. It is really responsive. It's got animations to it. It's just nicer than pretty much every other BMW out there and you know this car is expensive when there is a dedicated button in the middle 
for perfume choice. Yes, you can change between two different styles of perfume and you can refill them. They're stored within the glove box. Speaking of the glove box, the glove box is a half decent size because half of it is taken up by perfume canisters. You have a storage area here, which is of course wood paneling. Up front is a wireless charger. You have two pretty nice cup holders, a USB port, and maybe everyone who buys a 7 Series is so rich because you've literally got yourself a smoker's pack in this car. I, I bet you that's an optional extra. Probably don't do that. Stop smoking. The center armrest, we press a nice metallic button here. It opens up and yeah, we've got quite a bit of space in here and it's all felt line too. The door bins are a pretty nice size. So yeah, it is a massive car. So you would hope that would have quite a bit of storage in it. It certainly does. The other thing I need to tell you about is these seats. These are Nappa leather seats. You'll find Nappa leather seats across the entire 745E range. Though if you want to, you can spend over $11,000 and get Merino leather. If Nappa leather is just not luxury enough for you. But yeah, these seats are so nice. These ones have the M piping and there are so many different options you can choose for the seats. I love the red interior. If you're going to buy one of these, just go all out, get yourself the red interior. I mean, this is really nice with like it's quilted leather and oh my God, it feels so nice. Of course, it is automatically adjustable in every single way possible and you have had memory seats on both the driver and the passenger side. The seats are heated, they're cool. They don't have a massage function and I don't believe they offer that in Australia, which is a bit of a shame, but our buyers just don't really care about massage seats. Oh, and my favorite part of them is the headrest. It is just the softest material known to man and you could you could fall asleep in these seats and <laughs> that's probably quite dangerous. But hey, it's just super comfortable. Same as this steering wheel. It is a beautiful leather. It's pretty much the same steering wheel that you'll find in, in a one series because they've kind of standardized the range. But of course, this gets nicer buttons. It's got like this aluminium finish to it. It is a heated steering wheel, of course, nice and chunky in the hands and it's got paddle shifters. Although, I mean, anyone who buys a seven series is just gonna let the computers do all the changing of the gears for you but it's nice to have if you want to have a bit of fun in this thing, which you definitely can with the amount of power that it's got. One of the things they changed a couple of years ago for the facelift was the digital instrument cluster. So now you get this nice, big, bright, high definition screen. It is one of the best in the business. In the center, you have your maps. On the right hand side, you can change between a couple of different menus, but really not that many. And then on the left hand side, you just have your speedometer. When you're in every mode other than sport on the right hand side, it does show you like an EV kind of gauge where it doesn't really show you revolutions. It just so shows you power, e-boost. But then when we change to sport, the gauges change. And now you can see your revolutions. It's, it's kind of like you'd find in, in most other BMWs. But anyway, we'll come back to the driving modes a bit later. For now, let's continue with the interior. Another one of the big changes that they made for the facelift was the infotainment display. It is a really good unit. It's not like the most technologically advanced unit out there, but what it is, is extremely functional. It does have the classic BMW iDrive on it. So you can use this control dial down here to go through a bunch of different menus. And it is super, super responsive at that. You of course have digital radio, navigation, Android Auto, and wireless Apple CarPlay. And if you don't feel like using the iDrive controller, which I do 100% of the time, then you can use your hand and it is a touch screen too. And as I said, very responsive, color accurate, high definition, it works very well. But I think you'll find that the technology in a Mercedes S class is, is just, it's just more modern. Not necessarily better in its function, it just certainly is more, well, it's got that wow factor. And really that's my biggest complaint of the 7 Series is it does have the older BMW design language. It does feel a little bit dated. You could say it feels more mature on the one hand, but for me, coming in and out of lots of different cars, it just feels a bit old school. But hey, maybe maybe that's the uh, the vibe that they're going with here. And something that's really weird is here you have like this temperature control where you can make it colder or warmer just below the vents, but yet you have a different warm and cold control down here. So I don't know what the difference is. It's like you can make one really hot and make one really cold and I don't know what it does. Maybe one of you can let me know down in the comments below. Very strange. Oh, and you do get a heads up display and it's the same as what you'll find in most other BMWs. Not the latest where it's like massive, but it's still very functional. The other admittedly nitpick that I have is the sunroof because it's just not the biggest. I would have hoped that it would extend all the way, but it just feels a bit small. But at least you get it, I suppose, but you kind of hope you would get it for $230,000. Oh, and another thing that I absolutely love is that you get a Harman Kardon sound system, which is one of the nicest sounding sound systems I have ever heard in any car Ever. I used to sell audio equipment and when I turn this thing on and listen to it for the first time, my jaw dropped. They've obviously put a lot of money into these speakers because boy do they sound nice. But it does help that when you're sitting in here, it is 
dead silent. For the facelift, they added a bunch more paneling, sound deadening, and you've of course got very thick glass, very thick door panels. They've done as much as they could to make this an incredibly quiet experience. When you're just driving along the road, you are in the most serene place ever. It truly is, it is just an otherworldly experience, but as I said, 230 grand, you would kind of hope so. But yeah, the front is really, really nice, but wait till you see the back. So let's go there now. The rear seat is, as you would expect, a limo. You get in here and I'm sitting behind myself and I'm like in another postcode, <laughs> I'm so far away. I have so much toe room, I have so much leg room, head room. Oh. Yeah, it's really nice back here as you would expect, right? But honestly, the back seat kind of just exceeded my expectation. The quality is just as nice as up front. Leather absolutely everywhere. You get like these ashtrays here, which are well dampened. And look at this. You have peasant blockers. <laughs> it's just a one button push. I can do it on that glass too, although you can't see that. And even behind me, maybe you can start to see that. Oh, you, you, you just cocooned back here. But anyway, I'm gonna open these up to get a bit more light, but I think you get the idea. The seats are just so comfortable. If I had one complaint, maybe they don't quite extend to my legs as much as I would like, but I guess I could just go like this anyway and, and be super comfortable. You of course get air vents galore back here, 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 and under the seat. And it is quad zone climate control, so each side can have their own temperature, in both at the front and the back. Everything just feels so quality, got wood here. But wait, there's a best part. You get an armrest, but in the armrest, you have a tablet. So what else does the armrest do before we get onto the tablet? Well, you've got a bunch of storage space here, of course, felt lined. You have your cup holders here, and if we press that out, they pop open. That is German over-engineering at its finest. You know, you've got your leather here, you've got wood, but this is the best part. So let's take out the tablet by pressing this, and it is delivered to us insane. So yeah, I've got it on right now. It's quite funny because it's clearly a Samsung tablet. It's got a camera in the back. Not that that will work, although you could probably port that over or do whatever you want. But the amazing thing about this is it's running like a BMW OS on it. So from here, I can do things like sun protection, put up that blind. In fact, I want to put up all the blinds so I can close them all. So everything, including the sunroof, starts to close. But again, it's getting a bit dark in here, so I'm gonna open all of those up. I can also change the interior lighting from here, so I can change all the different colors. Or how about I change the air conditioning because I can't be bothered to reach forward there. You can also do something called ionization. I'm, I'm yet to learn what that really means. And you can change the fragrance from here too. Oh, if I want blue sweet number one or golden sweet number two, this is the bougiest car in the world. <laughs> yeah, I can show the navigation on here, exactly how fast we're going, where we're headed to, and I can control the Apple CarPlay from the device here too. It's frankly absolutely insane. You put it back in and it, it electronically closes. It is just, it's, it's another world in here. I've had a taste of luxury life and I think I want to live it. <laughs> Imagine just being driven absolutely everywhere in the back of this car. It, it's, it's, it blows my mind. <laughs> anyway, that was a pretty comprehensive tour in the interior. Let's get back to the driver's seat so I can tell you exactly how this thing drives. Okay, so back to how this thing drives. Let's talk about charging very quickly. It's strange because BMW don't actually provide you with charging numbers, but when charging with a standard three pin socket at your home, it takes about seven hours to get a full battery charge. Again, giving you about 36 kilometers of range as I've experienced. But really BMW expect you to install a home box or level two charger, some people call it, and that will get you to a full charge in around about three and a half hours. So pretty standard charging times, especially for a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Now, as I said a bit earlier, we do have different driving modes. So we have sport that stiffens up the air suspension. Just a little bit though, it's certainly not stiff. It adds a bit of weight to the steering wheel, increases throttle input, and also optimizes battery usage, electric motor usage, and the engine to give you maximum power. And really, if we give this thing a bit of sauce, yeah, it takes a while for the transmission to, to really kick down. But once you do, man, does this thing just put out a lot of power, a lot of power. But of course, like any rational person, we would keep the car in hybrid mode and then we let the car just decide when it wants to use battery, when it wants to use the engine. And as I said, it acts very similarly to a Toyota or Lexus product. And it really is a very cruisy experience. One of the most amazing things about this car is just how quiet it is. I cannot hear any of the outside world. There's a tiny bit of road noise, tiny, tiny bit, but everything else is 
dead silent. The other thing as well is the air suspension. Oh my God, this is the most comfortable air suspension I have ever felt. You seriously just glide along the road, even though I'm going through the twisties right now, I don't really have much desire to, you know, floor the car and bang it around a corner. I just, I can't be bothered because I'm, I'm in serenity right, right now. I mean, like the ultimate comfort. And of course there is an electric mode, so the car will drive completely using electricity only. In fact, let's see what that feels like. Oh. It just kicks back on the engine when you want to put more power down. That's all right, we'll take it out of electric mode, put it in sport mode because we're coming up to saucy corner. Let's give it some sauce. Oh my God, this thing's fast. Oh, okay. Oh God. Oh man, the power in this thing is nuts. The grip is pretty good, surprisingly, for a rear wheel drive giant behemoth like this. Wow, yeah, <laughs> took it within its stride. I'm super impressed, but uh, yeah, enough, enough of that. Back to hybrid. One thing that the 7 Series is definitely not is a sports car. Even though it's got a huge amount of power, the steering is incredibly light. You know, there is an enormous amount of body roll in this thing and the air suspension does do its best to stop leaning, but really, you know, you definitely, yeah, you, you definitely don't take corners at 10 tenths, not that you ever would. And this car doesn't want you to either. As I said, when you sit in here, you just don't ever want to floor it. You don't ever want to do anything silly. You just wanna like relax, sit back, put on the music because of the awesome sound system and enjoy yourself. But you know what? When you are on a back road, you can definitely have a bit of fun. But yeah, let's give it some more sauce. Oh, that shift was hard. Yeah, it's surprising. Even in sport mode, the steering is really quite light. Uh, I would call it effortless. And actually one of the big changes that they made for this facelift was stiffening the suspension. I can't imagine what it, what it was like before because this feels so wafty. I just couldn't even imagine if it could get more wafty than this. Yeah, it truly is a serene experience. This is probably the best audio quality I've ever had in a video just because of how quiet it is within here. Okay, we're going back down saucy corner here. So let's give it a bit of sauce. Yeah, it's not confidence inspiring. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, okay, let's see, let's see, come on. Oh, you can see I'm like twitchy on the steering wheel because I don't want to overdo it. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, it's not something I would do very often though. I think I'd just keep it in hybrid mode and drive like a, a sane person. A question that a lot of people ask is, well, why would I get a plug-in hybrid vehicle? Well, first of all, this is the cheapest entry point into the 7 Series here in Australia. And it comes with one of the most powerful engine and drivetrain choices out there. So that's pretty good. For most people who drive these cars, they're usually only doing about 36 kilometers or so a day. So they can drive the car completely on EV mode only. And then, you know, if you want to go on a longer trip, an interstate trip, you can definitely definitely do that and you'll get the benefits of a hybrid drivetrain. So lower fuel economy. Right now I'm averaging 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. That's pretty good. But also if you care about the environment, I think that's a pretty good reason to buy yourself a plug-in hybrid. Until the fully electric EQS or fully electric 7 series is here, you know, this is probably your best option if you want a luxury car that's not a totally bad choice for the environment. Although really anything this extravagant is is, is not the greatest choice anyway. I must be sitting amongst 30 dead cows right now. So yeah, I mean, this plug-in hybrid makes sense. So what's my final verdict on the BMW 7 Series? It's always hard for me to say, yeah, you know, you got 220 grand burning a hole in your pocket, go out and buy yourself X car. What I can say is that if you want one of the most refined driving experiences out there, one of the most serene, calming driving experiences out there, then the 7 Series is 100% worth a look. The S-Class has recently been updated and admittedly it does have better technology, but you get this like old school classic feel in the BMW that you just don't get anymore in the S-Class. I'm not saying that's a bad car, I'm not at all, but this would suit probably the more mature buyer. It really does have the classic BMW driving experience, which is pretty unparalleled. And I can highly recommend that you go for the 745e, at least here in Australia, just because it's the cheapest and one of the most fun. But let me know what you guys think of the BMW 7 Series. It is a very cool, very special car. So comment down below, just below that like button. Subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. I release awesome car reviews like this every week. And click over there to watch one of my other reviews. I highly recommend it. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next week.